Hi there, my name is Genevieve Roby and this show is called The Lens. Today I have with me Maddie Wood. Thank you Maddie so much for coming. <laughs> And then sometimes I get really lucky and like flush out an entire song in like 20 minutes 
and then other times it may take me a week, it takes me a couple months, it really kind of depends. Yeah, totally. As far as thematically, do you feel like, is there something that you lean towards, or is, or is it just kind of about everything? I mean, I feel like I'm mostly, most of my songs are, I mean, everything I write is really personal. Um, I found that most of the songs that I write that I end up keeping or that I feel strongest about and that other people feel strongest about are stuff I've written about, like, past relationships, whether, like, romantic or, like, other, um, songs that are about that. <laughs> yeah, I very much relate to that. I feel, I feel like your, your work, as I've heard it, is, has always been very, um, emotionally conscious and it, it feels really genuine which is like it just I really appreciate that about your work. <laughs> yeah um, so as far as the music realm at Bennington what has that experience been like for you so you're a junior so mm -hmm. you've been here for three years mm -hmm. already um, <laughs> <laughs> I know I know um, well so Bennington, like music of Bennington, is that it's really like I feel like I've been able to focus on exactly what I want to focus on and what I've always wanted to focus on before college, which is ultimately just like being a better musician, being a better performer. And but I'm also like fed through the tube of what I want. I'm also getting some theory and I'm getting some like different Type, like in, in music history and like that kind of stuff, but it's very much always been focused on the individual student, and then we all kind of learn from each other as well, which is really cool. Um, I I have always found the music department has such a large, like eclectic range of faculty too, which is really cool. I've never gotten the same experience twice in a class, mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I really love how collaborative. Too. Um, I feel like everyone, like not that's just not in the music department, but but the thing about Bennington is cross discipline. People are looking to collaborate all the time, and some really cool stuff comes out of that. Um, I've definitely been pushed a lot as a music student. Um, when I got here, I I mean I'm self taught in pretty much everything that I play. Um, I had no formal music education, but I've been playing music for like. 12 years. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew that was going to be hard for me, like keeping up with the theory people and like with that aspect of things. And it definitely has been challenging, but I've always, I've never felt like helpless. You know what I mean? I've always felt like I've had a really big support from the faculty and kind of be like, okay, here's, let's figure out how you would digest this the best. And then whatever you pick up from that is all that you need to know. I think ultimately I really appreciated how at the end of the day, what's important is that I'm getting what I want out of what I'm learning. I don't feel like I'm being forced like any pointless information. Whereas I got other, I, when I was applying to college, I applied to all other like, Every, except for Bennington, every school I applied to was like a music conservatory, mm -hmm. which after being here, like by October my freshman year, I was like, I would have dropped out already at any of those other schools because that's just like not how I learn. Yeah. And it's like everyone's doing the same like cookie cutter, whatever, which works for some people, but like mm -hmm. didn't work for me and this does work for me. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we've kind of talked about this already and feel free to say as much or as little as you want to about this, but um, I personally have kind of struggled as, as a female person um, a little bit here. And I think it's not just specific to Bennington, but the music industry in general. Um, and I appreciate that Bennington when we can talk about it. Like, I appreciate sure that I can have this conversation. Um, but as far as like being a female musician, what is that like here? I I mean I could say a lot, but what I will, what I will say I have also struggled with that. I feel like it was really weird to kind of the reality when I figured out freshman year. But as much as this is a very like 
in terms of the story of like population of the school, it's very female um, and it's a very inclusive place and whatever. But I found the music department to be a boys club, like 100%. Um, not in terms of like the way that the faculty behaved, but definitely in terms of at least like with our class, mm -hmm. it, the music students were almost all male. And those are also the same people that felt really comfortable talking in class, had a formal education in music theory, and all played in a jazz band, and whatever. And they often only wanted to play with each other because it seemed that they were like the only people that knew what they were doing. Like there wasn't really a lot of room for people like me or like that are good musicians, but maybe can't read. Like so, you know, like stuff like that, and so it's hard. I definitely think as I've gotten older here, I feel much more comfortable being vocal about it, and I hope the same for other like non-male students in the department. I feel like as like I'm the SPC rep for music, and one of the SPC reps for music, and that's like been something that I I've been really working on with my co-rep is like making sure that everyone feels equally included and valued in the department and we don't let any, like no one's voice is louder than anyone else's voice. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely hard and it's definitely really frustrating, especially because the a lot of the time the boys of the boys club don't really want to confront their behavior. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. I don't see why it would be necessary for them to change. Not to say that anything about their personal character, mm -hmm. but it's like kind of a, again, like you said, it's a greater culture of like the music world in general. And I think at Bennington, because it's so small, it's much easier to pick it out. Yes. And specifically talk about it in terms of certain groups of people. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think I think as it's been brought up more, I have found that the faculty have been like more willing and able to like catch it in the moment, yes. which I think is like really important and then kind of like very calmly kind of like dive into the situation and mm -hmm. I think that's really important, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And that's a big part of, like I've said before, that's a big part of why I wanted to do this is because I think like boys clubs are great, but <laughs> Like, there are so many voices here yeah. that don't always get to be heard through the streams of on-campus student concerts totally. and who's chosen to be put in those concerts. Um, and so, yeah, like I said before, I'm very, like, grateful to be able to talk with you about this. And, yeah. Um, and as far as, okay, we're wearing masks. Yeah. <laughs> We are keeping distance. Mm -hmm. um, what, for you musically, what has it been like making music in a time in the time of COVID? Um, I mean, honestly, it's been really hard. I found that like I, I when I was home, when we all went home, and like through the summer, I was having a really hard time feeling creative, just because I felt so stifled by everything that was happening and that is happening. Um, it was a weird regression being at home. Not, I mean, I love my home, but I'm like, I'm 21, and like, you know what I mean? Like, it felt hard, and, but there are certain things I like, for a while, I was doing, like, every Friday, I was doing, like, a live stream concert on my Instagram page, oh. which, for, for, like, 40 minutes, like, every week, which was really, I mean, it was, it was really nice for me to feel like I had something that I, I would, like, do, like, five new songs every week, and I would, it would be, like, something good for me to practice and, like, work to, and then also it was nice to feel like I'm still engaged with the people that like to watch me perform, mm -hmm. so that was cool, that was, like, something that I did, um, I mean, it's really, I mean, it's hard, like, I was talking to my advisor last week being, like, I'm having a bit of an existential crisis because I'm here in college studying to be a live performer, essentially, and live music is canceled for the foreseeable future, so, like, what am I doing here? And he was like, I don't know, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It just happened, like, nobody knows what to do, but also, I think 
then in this time, the demand for live music is so high that people are going to be willing to make it work safely, like, one way or another. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to what I'm doing. Like, I mean, I'm still in school, which is something that's helpful. Like, that's mostly what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. But we'll see, I guess. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so, is there anywhere else that the people can find more of your music? Or, see, you were talking about how you do sometimes Instagram yeah. live streams. Um, I do to the people. <laughs> Just Maddie Wood, I'm going to give you Wood. My song is there. Um, I'm releasing some new stuff soon, which is exciting. Um, and my Instagram is at womanwood underscore. So then I post a lot of music stuff on there. Um, yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, thank you. I couldn't see.